everyone, Kate here, and this week I'll be showing you how to make a 1920s face enamel, and then discussing why I don't really care for 1920s face enamels in practice, despite the fact that I really love the concept of them. I will also be providing an alternative powdered version of this recipe. The original formulation for Liquid Snow White comes from the 1924 book, Practical Use of Raw Materials in the Beauty Parlor. I'll be honest, as a fan of children's literature and classic fairy tales, I mostly picked this recipe because I like the name. This product is what was called a liquid powder, which were also sometimes referred to as face enamels. These preparations consisted of a face powder, dissolved in a liquid, typically a mixture of water and or alcohol. The formulation I'm using today contains a mix of water and alcohol for its liquid base, with the alcohol acting as a natural preservative to help extend the shelf life, while also allowing the product to dry faster on the skin to make application easier. I have tried all water-based liquid powders before, and they really don't apply nearly as well as the alcohol-based ones. The alcohol does, however, make this product a bit drying, and I wouldn't really recommend it for everyday use. This sort of product really typically tended to be recommended for the occasional nighttime use, such as for a big night out, rather than sort of an everyday thing. The powder component of this recipe often contains a fair amount of zinc oxide, which gives it an opacity that made it sort of a precursor to modern foundation. Just to note, while this is quite a light colored powder, any of my powder recipes can be adapted for different skin tones. I'll link my video tutorial on how to customize any powder recipe down in the description below. Now, this is not the first liquid powder I've ever tried. And after this experiment, I've come to the conclusion that while it's an interesting concept, I'm not personally a fan. More on this later, but first, let's discuss the formulation. For this recipe, you will need 19 grams of orange flower water or neroli water, 18 grams of an alcohol. Now the original formulation recommended eau de cologne, but to avoid excess skin irritation, I've just used 18 grams of vodka, plus three drops of rose geranium essential oil. 10 grams of zinc oxide. And lastly, what was supposed to be two grams of talc. Now I don't use talc due to safety concerns, so I've substituted in one gram of kaolin clay and one gram of calcium carbonate. Although in retrospect, I probably should have just used the calcium carbonate as kaolin was used more in powder powders rather than liquid powders, whereas calcium carbonate was often used in both. This is a very simple recipe. All you need to do is put everything together into a container and mix it thoroughly. Next, for some reason, I tried to pour it back into the container that I knew it didn't fit into. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking either. I was rather tired at the time. Finally, 
Finally, I poured the remainder into a properly sized container. With any liquid powder product, you do want to pick a container with a tight fitting lid, as this type of preparation tends to separate over time and will need to be shaken well before each use. Speaking of use, let's try this thing out. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> and yeah, I can understand the name, but even on my super pale skin, this is not a good look. The zinc oxide really gives it that white sunscreen appearance, which is just not, not flattering. <laughs> While I want to love liquid powders, I really, really do. None of the recipes I've ever tried have actually turned out well. They are messy, hard to apply, and tend to leave streaks of pigment on the skin, even if you're super careful. I also find them less comfortable to wear than a true powder. Speaking of which, I just couldn't end this video in a complete failure, so I decided to make the same powder, but this time as a real powder powder. <laughs> For this version of the recipe, you will need 7 grams of zinc oxide, 1 gram of kale and clay, 1 gram of calcium carbonate, 3 to 6 drops of rose geranium essential oil, depending on how scented you like your powder, and 35 grams of starch. You can make this powder more sheer by either using less zinc oxide or adding more starch. You may wish to also add in five drops of jojoba oil and a drop of vitamin E oil to help the powder better adhere to the skin and to prevent it from becoming too airborne while applying. Pour the powders into a makeup only coffee grinder. Cover with a small piece of plastic wrap to help control the dust before putting on the lid. Speaking of which, be sure to always wear a good quality dust mask when blending any sort of powder to protect your lungs. Grind everything together for 30 seconds. Once the grinding is finished, tap the lid with a spoon to knock down any powders clinging to it, and be sure to wait two minutes before opening to allow the dust to fully settle. Add in the oils and then repeat this blending process. If the oils aren't fully blended into the powder, repeat the blending process again. Mine looks good, so I'm ready to spoon it into a jar. Mm -hmm. 
So let's compare, shall we? We will start by once again applying the liquid powder. I'm only applying it to one side of my face so that I can apply the powder powder to the other side for a direct comparison. Oh yeah, that that's a that's a good look right there. <laughs> Next, let's try the fully powdered version. So, after comparing the two, I can say for certainty that I prefer the powder over the liquid. It is a bit messy to apply as it is a loose powder, but it goes on much faster than the liquid and has a softer, more comfortable finish to it. I do feel like it could benefit from some pigment, as these pure white, zinc-heavy powders are often not particularly flattering. They do look great on camera, however, a lot better than they do in real life. So there we have it, Snow White powder in both liquid and true powder form. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.